So your cat might be fat and you might not even realize it. More than half the cats in the US are overweight or obese. And nearly one third cat parents who have overweight or obese cats actually classified their cats as normal, ideal, or even too thin. And most pet parents believe that obesity is caused by poor feeding choices. Now, I'm not here to shame anyone for what you feed your cat. I've learned the hard way myself. My cat Coco, he's a family cat, very talkative Siamese. He, we would carry on conversations forever. <laughs> if you've ever had a Siamese cat, you know what I'm talking about. Meow. Meow. Coco was overweight and he was so desperate, sometimes he would even eat the dog's food. And unfortunately, he died suddenly at the age of 10 because he was dehydrated. So again, I'm not here to shame anyone. I've learned the hard way so that you don't have to. We're gonna talk about some stats and solutions that we can do to help your cat lose weight safely and on a healthy diet. Hey friends, it's Jess and Jericho. It is a blessing that you are here. Hallelujah. Yeah. So these stats come from the Association for Pet Obesity Prevention. They do surveys every year. The most recent one at the time of recording this is 2022. So let's take a look at this data. So first of all, we have right here, pets categorized with obesity, 33% of cats in the US. And this body condition score we're gonna take a look at, but Overall overweight or obese, 61% of cats in the US. So more than half of the cats in the US are overweight or obese. And this is a problem because obesity puts the cat at a much higher risk for a bunch of different health issues. They have excess weight, unnecessary weight, that puts pressure on the joints. So you might see things like arthritis. Some of these cats don't really wanna walk around and play. They might not wanna climb up onto their condo. And that lack of mental stimulation, enrichment, and healthy exercise can cause boredom, can cause stress, can cause overeating. And also obesity can put the cat at a much higher risk for things like diabetes, cancer, and in Coco's case, in my personal experience, shortened lives. So how do we solve this? Well, first of all, if you don't know that your cat is overweight or obese, you can't do anything about it. So I mentioned the body condition scorecard from APOP, Association of Pet Obesity Prevention. So this is a body condition score card, and this is what we use to see if our cat is either under, under ideal or too thin, ideal, AKA normal and healthy weight, and or body condition and over ideal, which would be overweight or obese. So right here in the middle, this number five, the one that's highlighted a little bit in blue in the background, this is ideal. And they say well-proportioned, ribs felt with slight fat covering, waist seen behind the ribs, but not pronounced abdominal fat pad is minimal. So you're going to look at your cat from above and also from the side and then physically feel around on your cat to see if your cat is overweight or obese. So from above, you should be able to see an indentation of the shoulders and the hips, and you should see where the ribs are. Now, if you look over here on the left, where this is under ideal, this is too thin, you can see the clear difference. It's very bony and there's, it's very pronounced. Whereas with ideal, it isn't bony, but you can see some definition there. And then from the side, again, same thing. You can see where the shoulders are, you can see the legs and the hip and the primordial pouch, that little hanging pouch that cats have. That's an extra layer of skin to protect themselves when they do those bunny kicks. I'm sure your cat does that when he, when he plays. Jericho does it all the time. But when they're hunting and bunny kicking, that extra skin protects their organs. And that is typically where fat will start to accumulate first. So the primordial pouch, you should be able to see that you've got an, an indentation right there, a tuck as the belly reaches the legs. So again, you can see the clear indentation but it isn't stick skinny and emaciated looking like over here on the left. 
Now when you now when you have over ideal, this number seven would be considered overweight, this number nine would be considered obese. Basically, if your cat is round, your cat is overweight or obese. Cats aren't supposed to be round unless they are pregnant. So if your cat is round and she isn't pregnant, she's either overweight or obese, or there's a medical condition. So again, with seven here, the overweight, you can see the cat is round on the side and very round on the, or excuse me, round above and round from looking at the side. So you can see that there's a little extra fat. It's a little more round compared to on the side of the ideal where it's kind of straight. And then with obese, you've got even more round on the side. You can't see a clear indentation of anything really. It's just, you know, it's just extra fat. And when you're physically feeling around on your cat, you would feel, it says, feel it along the ribs. So you should be able to feel the rib bones with fat covering it, but to the point where you're not like digging into your cat trying to find the ribs, basically. So again, not stick skinny and emaciated like on the far left, but right in the middle where it's ideal. A healthy amount of fat and muscle covering the bones, but not so much fat that your cat has unnecessary round of fat. So another stat here is that 68% of pet owners agree that obesity is caused by not enough exercise. And this is including cats and dogs in this. So what we can do here, as I mentioned before, overweight cats, they're probably in a lot of pain. They don't really want to move around and play, right? Because they've got the extra weight, which is weighing them down. Maybe they have arthritis already. So what we can do is we can use your cat's current food and treats and hide them on top of condos, hide them on top of whatever kind of cat furniture you have, hide them in, inside beds, hide them inside your cat's tunnel. Make your cat work for his food because out in the wild, cats are hunters. They're not grazing cows. They don't need 24 seven access, all access buffet. So we can mimic that hunting indoors by hiding food and treats. Now I'm not saying to feed your cat and also do this on top of what your cat eats. Take the total amount that your cat eats in a day and instead of leaving it out all day, you can take it and hide it around your home. You know, for breakfast, he'll hunt, he'll eat by Jericho. And then whatever he doesn't finish, put it in the refrigerator because technically we're not supposed to leave food out all day. Put it in the refrigerator, save it, and then the next meal time, hide, it, hide the food again and then make your cat work for the food. So that can give a little incentive to kind of get, mo you know, get moving and get your cat a little active. And you can also use your cat's food and treats as an incentive to play. So that can be the reward. You can do clicker training, use your cat's food and treats as a reward for clicker training. So you can train your cat to, to move around a little bit and then with toys, you know, cats love to play. The indoor version of hunting is playing, but when you attach a toy or, I mean, when you attach food or treats to it, that gives a little more incentive. Now, again, we are not feeding over the amount. We are not feeding excess food and treats. We are feeding what we currently feed in the day and splitting it up and using it in these ways instead of leaving it out all day. The next stat we'll, that we'll take a look at is 70% of pet owners, again, cats and dogs, 70% of pet owners agree or somewhat agree that obesity is caused by poor feeding choices. And they ha do have some cans here, but it's mainly dry stuff. So the problem here is that pretty much all dry food and a lot of wet food is very high in carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are absolutely necessary in dry food because that's what holds all the ingredients together and that's what gives it that kibble shape because it's cooked, it's pressurized, it's processed. If there wasn't carbs and starch, all of the ingredients would just fall apart. But it's a, the same is pretty much true for wet food. There's, there's thickeners, there's all of these like, you know, corn, rice, and wheat. Even if your food is grain free, it could still be high in carbohydrates. Things like peas, legumes, lentils, potatoes. They use that stuff to replace the grain. Most of the time they add these fillers because those are cheaper than meat. So the problem with carbohydrates is that they break down into sugar and then they get stored in the body as fat. The other issue is that 
Cats can't utilize carbohydrates. They need protein from meat and they need animal fat for energy. So when they have carbohydrates, you have a high carbohydrate food, naturally the other macronutrients are gonna go down, right? Because we only have 100% to work with. So if your cat's food is 33% carbohydrate on a dry matter basis, that's the average that I've seen among dry foods, then we only have like 60% left between protein and fat and the ash. So it's going to be naturally lower. So there's less nutrition that your cat can actually use, which means your cat needs to eat more of it so that it's actually nutritious. And that kind of gives you this vicious circle of, okay, my cat needs to eat more, but now he's getting more carbohydrates and that's going to fuel hunger and also fuel weight gain. So the solution here is to transition your cat from dry food or a high carbohydrate wet food to better quality wet food and ideally raw because raw is the lowest carb that you can get. If you can't feed raw, a lightly cooked fresh food diet is still really great. The fresher you can get, the better because you're going to have more meat, more organs. Obviously, you're not going to cook bones or feed cooked bones, but we wanna mimic what our cats would eat outside and the best way to do that indoors is to feed raw. Again, if you can't feed raw, that's fine. Homemade cooked, freshly cooked, human grade quality wet food, that's still much better than dry food because it's fresh ingredients, there's more meat ingredients, and there's fewer carbs. Now I have tons of videos here on this channel so that you can do that. If you don't feel like filtering through and finding the information, I have a Switch to Raw Blueprint self-paced video course. So I will hand deliver everything that you need, including planners and trackers, so that you can keep track of your results. And there is a bonus cat weight loss plan included in the course. So you'll go from dry or wet to a fresh food diet, either raw or a lightly cooked wet food diet. Barbara used this plan to get her 14 year old, 14 years old, Booger, he was kibble addicted. She tried everything, went through my plan and was able to get him onto raw. Not only did he lose weight, he lost a couple of pounds on a healthy diet. Obviously we don't starve our cats, but once they're eating a healthy diet, they naturally lose some weight. He also became more playful, 14 years old. He became more playful and his coat is beautiful and glossy. You can check out my Switch to Raw Blueprint video course in the description. You support my business, you get an amazing product, and your cat gets to lose weight without having to starve. It's a win-win-win. So the next stat that I wanna talk about is 62% of pet owners agree that overfeeding or giving excess treats is caused by lack of willpower. And I also want to mention another one in this actually, is that 62% of pet owners blame themselves for their pet being overweight or having obesity. Now again, I am not here to shame anyone. I'm, this is a problem and we need to talk about it and I'm also here to offer solutions. So with the willpower thing and blaming yourself, it's, it's, it's understandable, I completely, I completely get it. I've lost so many cats in my life and I, I'm still getting over that guilt. But that also fuels me and motivates me to help cat parents avoid these mistakes and avoid this heartbreak. With willpower, I know a lot of us associate food with love. Let me, oh, I, you know, he's begging for treats and I just wanna show him love and he loves the treats so much. So first, first, cats like treats and they like dry food because pet food companies are very smart. They add pet food flavor enhancer palatins to the products so that it's enticing for the cat to eat it. Because as I mentioned in another section, it's high in carbohydrates. They know that cats don't eat that. So they have to add stuff to the product so that the cat actually eats it. And then the problem is cats get addicted to it. So that's why your cat loves those treats. It's not because they're delicious. Well, maybe they are delicious <laughs> because of the enhancer palatins but it isn't because they're good for them. The way that I look at it is like with Jericho, he eats a homemade Romidi Bones diet with some whole prey. So I see that as I am loving Jericho because I'm feeding him an appropriate diet and I don't have to worry about willpower or lack thereof because I know that Jericho is nourished. He doesn't beg me for food. I mean, sometimes when I'm eating stuff because I eat a lot of meat too, he's, he's a little, he gets a little beggy. 
but he's perfectly healthy. He's an ideal weight and we play, we have a strong bond. And the way that I look at it is I'm loving him with an appropriate diet and I'm loving him with fuel that he needs, right? Because food is fuel, food is nutrition. It's not an entertainment. It's not, let's just be honest. I know that that's the way we look at it, but this has also been a transformation in my life, honestly. Side note, you might, you may or may not care about this, but I uh, switched to the carnivore diet as well. So I eat a lot of meat, a lot of butter, high fat, low carb. And this has been just so much more satiating for me and I've found really, really great results. I'm no longer a food glutton. Uh, my, my days used to be controlled by food. What am I gonna eat next while I'm eating a big meal? I used to order a lot of food. I spent so much money on food. Now I'm spending less money on food. I'm eating nutrient dense food. And it's just so much better because I see food now as energy, which is what it is, you know? I don't see food as like the highlight of my day, basically. It tastes good, I enjoy what I eat, but it isn't like my whole day. It's not what I am like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to eat. I eat because I'm hungry and then I'm satiated and then I'm done and I get back with my day. I have much more focus, much more clarity. So going back to your cat, because that's why you're here, and willpower, Try to, try to think of it differently. Food is fuel, food is nutrition. Let me love my cat with proper diet so that my cat gets the right nutrition, so that my cat isn't struggling to walk around or play, so that my cat can live longer and therefore I can love my cat longer. Just how I look at it, how you look at it is up to you. This is just the information that I use. The next thing that I wanna look at is the frontiers in veterinary science. And this is called owner and cat related risk factors for feline overweight or obesity. So they wanted to see where the connection is between the pet parent, well, the cat parent and their cat as it relates to obesity. And they actually found that Given that raw meaty bones alone was strongly protective against obesity, it may be the case that this type of diet provides beneficial enrichment by allowing normal chewing and gnawing behaviors and extending the time for consumption of meals. So this relates directly to the last point that we were talking about in that cat parents feel that they don't have the willpower. And a lot of cat parents, let's look back actually at APOP, it did say that there was one that said, oh, here we go. Is obesity a result of overfeeding? 73% of par pet parents do agree that obesity is a result of overfeeding. So this ties together. So we have overfeeding and we have lack of willpower. So right there with Frontiers of Veterinary Science, with this study that they did, they wanted to see if it's related to the relationship between the cat parent and the cat. And what they found was that cat parents who fed raw meaty bones were actually, had, had less uh, risk of obesity with the cat because the cat took longer to eat his meal. Because when the cat's eating raw meaty bones, it's chomping, chewing, macerating, there's a lot to get through versus just crunch, crunch down the hatch with dry food or just slopping up wet food or raw food. Raw food is great, but ideally we wanna match what cats eat outside and that's chomping and chewing on their prey. So it's, it's fascinating to see that there is a correlation between not just the food we feed, but also our relationship with our cats. So with this, we can, we can basically conclude that a homemade raw meaty bones diet is what's best for our cats to protect against obesity because it's a natural fresh diet and provides nutrients that cats need. It's low carb. It's not going to cause, like, uh, it's not going to cause uh, overeating or overfeeding because the cat takes longer to eat it. And cat parents can get their willpower back because they feel like they don't have to overfeed their cats because the cat's eating, it's satiated, and it has energy to run around and play. And the cat also has more mental stimulation and enrichment from chewing on the raw meaty bones. So overall, it's just a win, win, win. But you know, I know if you're not ready for homemade, that's fine. You know, I would still say get to wet or raw. Ideally raw is the best because that's going to be the lowest carb. But homemade raw meaty bones, I love it. It's, I think it's the most ideal diet. It's, it's the top. 
top notch for cats because <laughs> you control the ingredients, you control how it's made, plus all of these other benefits as well. You can check out my Switch to Raw Blueprint video course in the description below. Thank you so much for being here and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching.